On this episode, we work on collision detection. And it doesn't work. Ta-da! We strengthen our bond with our tools. Pico 8, why, why are you tormenting me like this? And also, confessions. See, I'm, I'm not a smart person. <sighs> Hi, I'm Christian, this is LazyFs Academy. Welcome to the episode. I think number 25 of our advanced shmup tutorial, we are still making a shmup. Hopefully it's gonna be good shmup. It's shaping up, it's like, have you seen our shmup? It's, it's, things are happening. This looks good. This looks like we have a, get a feeling of what our shmup will eventually look like. Uh, today, something I want to take care of is the collision detection, the dreaded collision detection. People are <laughs> always so afraid of collision detection. I understand there's like a lot of scary if statements happening, don't correct me wrong. But we can do this. We've did it before. We did it in basic shmup tutorial and we did it. I'm going to do it here as well. Um, there is something I want to maybe try out before we do that though. And that is... Um, you see how we always have to do the X scroll plus X scroll? You see how we always have to do that? Uh, and you know, this is part of this thing like if you already talked about how X scroll is a bit of a problem. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, um, I think there might be an easy way to solve this a little bit, uh, and I want to try it out. Um, the way I want to um, solve this is using the camera function. The camera function. Um, we use the camera function once for like shaking, and I think we can use this again now to to do the X scroll. So here's uh, the wiki entry uh, at my beautiful uh, advertisement-free pico8wiki.com. The wiki um, entry for uh, the camera function and it says um, sets the camera offset in a draw state. Setting a camera offset causes all subsequent draw operations to have the offset subtracted from their x and y coordinates. Uh, camera sets the origin point to draw functions and by default it is zero zero. Right, so this is actually what our x scroll is doing to some extent, right? Because we are like it's it's it, all of the draw operations that happen afterwards are gonna be just like moved around. So we don't have to add a variable to every single draw operation that we do. We just set, set it once in a camera function and all of the subsequent draw operations will be moved around. So I think it's worth trying this out. I never did it before. Yeah, this is gonna be a premiere. Let's see if that works. Uh, so it gets subtracted, right? Whatever is in camera will get subtracted. Uh, but that's not how we're working. X scroll is being added. So we're gonna go minus X scroll, comma zero. That is what I'm thinking. And then now we no longer have to draw the map at X scroll position. So we're gonna set it to zero. And let's see if this works. See, this works. Now, who look at the parallax scroll of the, of the enemies. That looks kind of nice. I kind of like this. I kind of like, oh man, I kind of want this now. Oh, do not tempt me like this, do not tempt me. Uh, <laughs> So but now we're moving sideways, the enemies are moving faster than the background. That's kind of nice. So we're not gonna, let's not complicate our things further. But you already kind of see the problem that we also the other stuff is also moving around, like everything is moving now like this. And so at some point we don't want our camera to move. So for example, our ship is not supposed to be affected by the X scroll. Um, so when we get to drawing the, actually we, when we get to draw the muzzle flash already, we want to reset the camera. We want to reset, reset the X scroll. And then later on, when we, um, when we draw the enemy bullets, that's where we want to bring it back. That's where we want to bring it back and then we're going to remove it. Now this is a lot of cameras X scroll turning on and off and every time it's four tokens. So maybe it would, might have been easier just to, to add the X scroll every time in terms of tokens. Uh, but let's see, let's see if this even works. Oh no, ah, of course, now we have to delete the X scroll every time we use the X scroll in the equation. I think this kind of just, just like makes more sense to me. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, uh, deleted them here. I also want to delete it here. Mm, the particles are now being also affected by this. This is kind of like the nice sub, uh, 
side effect. Now the particles are also scrolling with the background. This is good. Previously they weren't doing that. Yeah, this seems, seems okay. Now the enemies are kind of like planted in the background. Ah, you see the dots of the enemies, funny enough, are, are not. The dots are moving. Why are the dots moving? Uh... Oh yeah, uh, wait, why are the dots moving? This is the P-set. Oh yeah, because we have a plus X scroll. Actually, let's uh, w look for X scroll. Okay, camera, that's good. Camera, 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 camera. Okay, all of the instances of X scroll has, have been de de deleted. Yeah, that seems more natural. I mean, it seems natural in general, but also uh, yeah, yeah, it seems seems good. It seems good. It seems like it's working. Cool, cool, cool. Now let us move on to the collision detection, and this is a sore topic. Again, this is a sore topic. We it's it's complicated, but we also kind of did this, that thing already. So I have a copy and paste thing, and don't worry, this is not the draw the rest of the owl kind of situation. I kind of I'm tempted to put it into tools, simply because I know that the gameplay um, tab will be really big. Let's put it into tools. Bam. This is the collision detection from our basic schmuck tutorial. And it's not what we want to be doing, but uh, it's, it's maybe a good starting point. Why not? It's maybe a good starting point. See, because we kind of like did it in a, in a, in a clear text, left uh, top, right, bottom, left top, right, bottom. And so we can like easily adapt all this stuff. This is uh, something that we can keep using, right? We just need to fill in the, in the different values for left, top, right, and bottom, left, top, right, and bottom. So this is kind of nice. Now here's a bit of a thing that we have to realize. There's kind of like two difficulties about the collision detection part. There's two difficulties. One is the, just the math, like all the if statements of, of doing collision detection, which we kind of co covered here, almost. We need to calculate maybe, you know, the different edges, but it's, it's, it's doable. That's the first difficulty. The second difficulty though, and that is kind of like one that we haven't addressed here and might not be able to address completely on this episode, is how do we store all the data and manage all the data of you know the different collision boxes? Because you know each collision box, if you have a collision box, right, the, the thing that collides, that's four values. Four values about that collision box, you know, uh, X position, Y position, width, and height. That all those four values need to be stored somewhere, managed somewhere. It's when it's like this object collides with this object, so then you have to look up, okay, what are the collision boxes? Then you have to add the position of those objects, and then you need to calculate the top left, bottom right, and so forth. And then you do, do put it all into math. There's like eight values, or even more than eight values, flowing into and being like processed. And then where, what's the system that gets the values into the right places? You know, the, the logistics of, of, this, of the thing is something that is a challenge by itself, not just the math. Not just the hashing out the, the result, but also making sure that the right values get into the right places and are stored in the right places. The logistics of it is something that we have to figure out. This is going to be part of this entire enemy system that we're working in with. But for now, I want to create like a very simple system that, that just lets us test the underlying math. And if the, we are sure that the underlying math works, then we ha can th figure out you know, where and how we're going to store you know, the, the, the information, how we're going to uh, implement the logistics of it. For now, I want to do something like this. Let me, let me hear me out here. I'm going to do a, a rect. I'm going to do a rect around our ship. So px minus uh, 8, py minus 8, and it's going to be exactly 16 times 16 like this. And it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be, I'm gonna figure out a color that contrasts well. Maybe the color two, let's see how that, how that works. Okay, this is <laughs> good that we, okay, it's Pico 8 again. Pico 8, why, why are you tormenting me like this? Why you do this to me? So uh, the way we draw rectangles in Pico 8 is we have to specify the other point like on the other side of the rectangle, which is a lot of math. People will try to convince me that this is somehow good and it's not. You're wrong. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> um, I think it's minus seven. 
see now now we have to like really watch out so wh why is it oh it's py there we go uh maybe different color though maybe different color what about four what a brown uh no there's a, we're losing it see we're using a lot of colors in the background what about just seven just white okay okay sure sure and now I want to define some square somewhere else that I want to collide with, right? Let's just let's just start, just define a square somewhere on the screen, and that is going to be like uh, you know 32, 32, 32 plus. Uh, we're also going to make a sixteen times sixteen, uh, but it's going to have to be plus fifteen. That's 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 the confusing part, right? So now we have two squares, and I want the squares to change colors when they collide. That's all I want to do. So uh, what we want to do is collision. We want to do a collision something, and if if blah blah, uh, then uh, I'm gonna go local color my my c equals seven, and if there is a thing happening, then um, my c equals I'm gonna p p paint it red, right? And then we're gonna draw it at, with a my C color. So now it's white, but then when something happens, if false, um, then then I'm gonna turn it red, right? Let's see if this this even works. How that works? Yeah. And so we want them to turn red when they collide. Okay. All right. So now let us go. Like so, we're gonna run this call function, and if that call function is true, then we're gonna turn things red. Now with the call function here, is we have some problems here. Um, previously, we just had a and b, and those were um, basically objects, and you know the the program took all the information from the objects. But maybe now we want to actually, yeah, I don't know what to do now. See, the problem that we are having is that our ship is actually not an object. And we might actually see that's also already a takeaway. Maybe the ship, our ship needs to be an object. Uh, because it would make collision detection a bit easier, right? It would make that whole system a bit easier because you can just send the, the ship as an object in here. But for now, let's just split it out into a... Um, x1, y1, width 1, height 1. So those four values for um, the first object and then four values for the second object as well. So x2, y2, width 2, and height 2. So now we're feeding everything into these things. So this is going to be x1, this is going to be x, uh, y1, uh, this is going to be x2, this is going to be y2. Uh, now this here, the right edge, is going to be uh, x1 plus w1 minus 1. Again, because of that, that same thing, right? Uh, and here is going to be y1 height 1 minus 1 for the same reason. And then here is we're going to copy all those things, but we're going to change the two ones into twos. And here's going to be y and height, something like this. So we just like now we our collision detection function is really long, really really long. And but we're feeding it into the math, and then then it's it's all it's all good. Um, now let us now in the update function let us actually get all the information in. So we're gonna get here uh, px py 16 16 that's our ship and then we're gonna go uh, well we're gonna just do the values here for the rectangle that we have 32 32 16 16. A lot of numbers and it doesn't work. Ta-da! <laughs> Why you don't work? What was the problem? Oh, XY? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spelling mistake. And it doesn't work. Oh, wait, it does work sometimes. That's, that's, that's odd. 
<gasps> I know why. I know exactly why. We have to keep in mind that the position of the ship is now in the center of the sprite, not in the top left corner. So let us, um, yeah, let us do th this px minus seven and py minus seven, because that's where we're starting drawing the rectangle, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yes, yes, this looks good. Um, I want to do something here and I want to, the thing I want to do is make the speed really slow so we can see like sub pixel problems. Right here, here's this, the old speed 1.4. Let's set this speed to 0 0.3. See, now we're collided, but it doesn't register as a collision because of sub-pixel irregularities. Now we're collided, but now we're overlapping and it doesn't register as a, as a collision. Do, do we get the same problem on the other side? Here it's okay. It seems like here. Actually, no, here now we're collided here. Although we're not really collided, like visually we, oh, no, wait, actually, no, this is actually a mistake. No, don't, don't get me, oh, 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 this is actually way wrong. Okay, so let us let us debug the problem. What is the, what is the issue here? Oh, this is supposed to be Y. Yeah, this, this was, the bottom thing was X, but it should be Y. So let us see, okay, no, no collision here. That's already bad. Okay, this is colliding, that's good. This is also colliding. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, it seems like, it seems like we can, we can overlap a little bit and it doesn't register as a collision. So let me, let me get the speed really slow and to see if this is like a sub-pixel issue. No. It's not a sub sub picture. It's actually a genuine, genuine problem. But wait, it doesn't happen from the other side? It doesn't. Weird, huh? It happens from the from the left. It looks maybe like if the the collision box is just like like the wrong size. Let's see. No, they're both sixteen times sixteen. Hmm, let's see. Let's let's look at the co collision function one more time. Maybe we did some mistake. So something I want to try out is if we're going to floor this, if that will make the difference, if we're going to floor the player's position. Uh, maybe that will, that will be, because it might be a sub-pixel problem. Yeah, that was a sub-pixel problem indeed. So now we no longer have that problem. And again, I'm checking. I want to have like a very precise collision detection here. I don't want to have, you know, a, it being one pixel off. It, it's going to be imprecise for other reasons already because the, the collision box won't perfectly match the sprites. So at least I want the math underneath to be to be correct. Okay, so now we know that the fundamental um, you know math behind it is kind of correct, and we kind of start to developing maybe like the the logistic behind it. Uh, I don't want to have just like one collision section here. I want to have collision detection between three things. Um, I want the ships, the actual ship, to collide with the actual enemies, and that should result in game over. I want the bullets to collide with uh, the ship and I want the player's shots to collide with the enemy. So there's three things that we want to take care of. And yeah, let's, so let's, let's do the to-do list here. Let's, let's put it in the to-do list. Um, call ship versus enemies. Um, call bulls versus ship. Call... Um, um, shot versus enemies. Okay, let us take care of one of that uh, of them one at a time. First, ship versus enemies. Um, I, I I kind of like I kind of like uh, p having the ship here. L let's just let's just create like a global variable for now, like a little it's just for now, just for now. I'm gonna create like a global variable uh, which is called call uh, p call. I'm going to set it to false, but if it's collided, we're going to set it to true. So whenever the player collides with something, I want the, the, the thing to light up as a, kind of like a, as a visual information. Um, I think it's kind of nice when the actual collision box uh, lights up. Um, and we're going to um, set it to like uh, seven and a P call or 
No, no, p call and this is the same mistake I made previously. p call and you're going to do a ter ternary here. Um, p call and seven or eight, right? So uh, yeah, so like this. This uh, gets deleted. This gets deleted. This gets deleted. Right, and this is something we're going to take care and do in the update function. So here in update function, here in update function, after we moved everything, now we want to. But maybe before we do the particles, because maybe something explodes, right? Um, so after we moved everything, we do start doing the collision detection. So ship versus enemies, um, ship versus bu uh, bullets, um, shots versus enemies. And the order is actually important. We first actually want the uh, shots to hit enemies. And then if enemies are being shot down, then we want to first see if the yeah if the ship hits something. And it doesn't matter if the enemies or bullets are, are the, thing, the first or second that, yeah, that gets checked. Now first, let's do the enemy. So we're going to go for E in all enemies. Do. Right, and now we need to do the collision detection. Oh, we did not save the collision detection, no. So we're gonna go if call, and now we're gonna px uh, floor. px minus seven was, was our, our collision of the sh ship and floor px minus seven. Then 16, 16, that's kind of like the collision box of our ship. Now we're gonna have to take the collision box of the enemies and we're just gonna use a similar, we're gonna assume this enemy has a similar collision box as our ship, I guess. Right? Something like this. And then we, I put it in two lines so they can like uh, write under each other and then and then end right. So if if that's the the thing that that's that's collision here, and then here instead of px we're gonna go e dot x and e dot y. And by the way, this should be op y and sixteen by times sixteen. That's good. That's good. That's good. And then uh, if that's the case, then we're just gonna set p call to true. And then at the beginning, we're going to set p call to false, right? Uh, so every frame, we're resetting the p call to false, so we're not collided. And then we're going to go through all the enemies. And once we collide with an enemy, we're going to set it to true for that frame. And then next frame, we're going to reset things. So yeah, this is, this is the idea here. And we're going to try to run this now. I think we did it exactly the wrong way around. Yeah, 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 we did it the wrong way around. It's going to be 7 and... Like the colors are switched around. <laughs> okay, so we are now not collided. Uh, we should go back to the the normal speed again. I think we no longer need to go as slowly as we did. Okay, we're moving around. And that's good. Yeah, we're colliding. It's good. It's fine. It is fine. Oh, wait. Huh. What is happening there? <laughs> Can you guess what is happening there? Can you guess why we're not colliding with the ships on the right side? Huh? Can you guess why, why it's here? It seems fine. But here on the other side of the screen, it's kind of like, wait, that that's, that's, doesn't quite work. Do you know why that is? Well, our old pal, Xscroll, is again. Xscroll, no! <laughs> Our enemy, Professor X Scroll, has <laughs> stricken again. Yeah, so the problem is that we are um, moving the enemy sideways the, when, the, when the screen is scrolling. And so their position on the screen is not the same thing as the position that is saved in their object. We have to kind of calculate X Scroll out again. <sighs> X Scroll! Uh, X Scroll. It is, it is. You can tell that this is this is causing a lot of troubles now. But yeah, uh, 
Now we probably want to maybe set, set it up so it's a little bit more, um, uh, so we actually can tell the difference, right? So let us let us let us um, disable the enemy spawning for now. Where do we spawn those enemies? So we're, somewhere in update function, did we? Oh yeah, there we go. There, there we're spawning enemies. And uh, something I want to do now is I want to maybe you know let us let us uh, do a spawn n here at the very beginning. And we're going to rewrite the spawn end real quick. Uh, gameplay, there we go. We're going to rewrite this real quick. And we're going to spawn a whole bunch of enemies, but we're not going to. We're going to set the brain to something else, to two, so they're not moving. And we're going to do something like if uh, for i equals one, two, eight, uh, let's go five. Do so. We're going to spawn five enemies. And the position is not going to be random, but it's going to be i divided by 32, uh, comma. Uh, right, and the x position is going to be 32, comma. <laughs> okay, so now we have multiple enemies. Uh, maybe we should um, plus i times 32, is that, is that okay? Oh wait, uh, let's go zero. Okay, so yeah, this, uh, see, it's still colliding here and it's not colliding here, but this might be, I need to actually, when I draw the enemy, I want to maybe draw a rectangle around that enemy as well. So let us go here. Uh, something like this, e dot x, e dot y, e dot x plus 15, and e dot y plus 15. No, actually, yeah, yeah it's plus, plus eight, right, right, it's plus eight. Uh, and then we're gonna make it seven. I wanna see the, the collision box. See, now we're colliding, even though we shouldn't be colliding, so that's already off. This is way off, this is not good. This is okay. Something may be wrong with our values that we're working with. I wonder if it does an X scroll problem. A minus X scroll plus. Like a order of operations issue, maybe. Sometimes you get to these things. Nope. Uh, oh, I, I do not add x scroll to the x to the y position. Just to the x. Okay, yeah, this seems better. It's still not perfect, but it's better. Okay, so maybe it's actually uh, not minus, but plus. I think it might be plus. We're, we're going the wrong direction. Yeah, 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 see? See, I'm, I'm not a smart person. I'm, I'm also kind of like just figuring it out. Now the collision seems fine. Let us um, uh, slow down the speed. To see the subpixel collision. See now we're collided, but but we it's not showing that we're collided. This is okay. This seems fine. I mean, if we make it make it just minus eight, what? How about that, huh? No, it's minus eight in on the x position. No, that's actually wrong. We need to do it minus six. Yeah, I think this is a problem of offset alignment with the collision box. Yeah, this seems good. Okay, so this um, covers a ship versus enemies. And now uh, let us cover, let us do shots versus enemies. I want um, shots versus enemies. So we're gonna do for all the enemies, and I'm gonna 4S in all 
shots do and then um, now if we're gonna get hit then um, like if the collision happens then I want for the enemy um, um, is call equals true to be set to true and then otherwise yeah I'm just gonna set it to true um, we also need to at the beginning to set the collision for the enemies to, tr to false so we're gonna loop through all our enemies at the beginning we're gonna set is called to false and then we're gonna set it to true and then when we're spawning the enemies um, we're gonna create like a, this is just a little, little helper thing we're gonna um, we're gonna reset this later on we're gonna remove this later on but I just want to when I draw them I just want to see where the collision is happening um, Right, so the, again, we're gonna go with something like E is call and uh, eight or seven, so we can see the enemies colliding. Let us let us let us give me a higher speed again. So now I want the enemies to turn red when the bullets hit them. Um, so right, so the collision should be not between uh, the PX, but we should be between the S, like in shot. Um, it, I, I had minus seven for the for the um, ship, but here it's gonna be this is minus one, this is minus two. Let me let me let me look this up. So um, this is zero. This is minus one. This is minus two. This is minus three. Right. So it's minus three, and the width. Uh, p p uh, s dot x. S dot X. The position of the shot minus three. That's going to be the left, upper left edge of our collision box. Then S dot Y for the top of the collision box. We said that the center of the shot is going to be at the very tippity top. I think that's how we set it up. Um, the width of the shot is around six. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's sometimes a bit wider. We're gonna be generous. We're gonna we're gonna set it to eight actually, because like in the widest version, it's eight pixels across, and the height of the shot is gonna be sixteen. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, by the way, we also need to make X scroll work here because the shots are also affected by X scroll. Um, and yeah, let's let's, let's try this. Yeah. It's working. It's working. And this works with every enemy. That's good. So the enemies now are now receiving collisions. Now we also want to maybe spawn some bullets. Let's spawn some bullets. Um, mm, 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 here we go. We're just gonna spawn a bullet, it's fine. Um, 64, 64, I'm gonna spawn a bullet in the center, uh, and yeah, it's not, not gonna be flying, it's just gonna be a stationary bullet. Maybe a bit further to the right, so we can see, ah, uh, not, not like this, um, let's go 90. So here's the bullet, and I want to collide with this now, and again. Uh, similar to the way we did it with enemies, but now we with bulls, and it's it's changed it to B, so we know that it's bulls. And I'm gonna go B X, uh, and then B X here, B Y. Uh, the bullet is one, two, three, so it's minus three uh, and minus three on the top left corner of the bullet, and the width and height are seven. It's an uneven number of pixels across. If that happens, we're gonna we're gonna collide. So again, oh, see, it didn't. Co it should collide here, but it didn't. Uh, let us make our ship slow again. Let us comment the enemies out. I don't know if I did this, but you can do like a, a minus minus and then square brackets. It allows you to comment out a whole bunch of stuff. 
you just need to close it again like this with another square brackets. Okay, so now we are on our own with the bullet scene. I think we are off by one. It's an off by one issue. I don't know why that is, but so for some reason it is. Like, we're gonna get to the bottom of this maybe eventually, but for now, yeah, it should be one, two, three. I don't know why, why that is. Uh, we had the same thing with the enemy, so maybe that's something something to do with the code. Maybe we're not drawing the things where we're supposed to be drawing them. But yeah, this looks good. Uh, oh, this doesn't look good. Uh, the X in the X position is, is wrong. Okay, so this is good. This is good. And this is good as well. So we have now completed all of our collisions. It's a bit of a janky solution right now, um, but it's fine. Just accept the jank, let it flow over you. <laughs> And when the jank has passed, only you will remain. <laughs> um, for now, let us move on to the doggy zone. Yes, in the doggy zone, I mean, it's predictable what comes next. When, you know, it's going to be a challenge for you to figure out as well. We now have a whole bunch of collision detections. And our goal is now to react those collision detections. Not just like make something glide up or anything like this, but actually truly react to the, the collisions. Um, the things that I'm most interested in is um, sure when any when a player gets hit, we maybe want to them to get lose a life or something. But uh, that's not a high priority for me. What I'm interested in is are the effects when you hit an enemy. I want to kind of like do a little bit of uh, uh, do a little bit of breather and focus on the juice of enemies getting hit on the right effect of enemies getting hit because this might require some additional special effect systems and yeah we're gonna de dive into this on the next episode and I want you to have a go at this in the doggy zone. For now let us move on to the final segment of each episode where I say a big thank you and a huge shout out to all of the people who are supporting the show on coffee.com. The URL is coffee.com slash lazydevs and one of the little perks that you know supporters of the show get is they get to see the next episode before it gets released on YouTube. So that might be a little incentive other than just supporting the show. <laughs> uh, also, I wanted to maybe read out a comment. Uh, there is a, there was a depressing comment <laughs> on the basic schmuck tutorial episode 10. Aram said, well, this is the one that broke me. There's something about object oriented programming I just can't get my head around. I I can I can completely understand when I first encountered object oriented programming. That also didn't make sense to me. I remember very well that was Action Script three in, in Flash, uh, and Action Script three used a lot of objects, and I just like especially like the by reference and by value thing. Just just really just it took a while for me to click. Uh, what I would suggest to Aram is just like do not give up. It will fall into place eventually. You, it will just make sense eventually, but you just have to um, uh, keep working on this. Um, if the explanations that you see in the, in, the, in the video that if they don't help you, then just do your own experiments. Just try to figure out your, yourself. You yourself know what you are struggling with, and then maybe just setting up an experiment, setting up a little prototype, and just you know poking around with values, writing things on the screen, writing values on the screen and seeing how things work out when you do changes yourself. I think this can be a very powerful tool to get over these kinds of blocks, right? These kinds of like understanding blocks. But also like, don't worry, these are not really complicated object orienting programming stuff. A lot of the by reference and by value problems that you that come with object oriented programming, you're not actually taking advantage of these too much anyway. So if even if you don't quite have a good grasp on on uh, you know the object oriented programming stuff you still might get through uh, the rest of the tutorial yes 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 so this was a bit of a tough episode but we got there next episode we're gonna relax with some juice see you next time around guys bye bye <laughs>